Det är jag lugn. Man kör på sådär. Okej. Så är det softigt. Hey everyone. Hur ser du ut? Det kan vara en shot här. Har du en jakt då? Så. Hey everyone. Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, my name is Seppi, and today I have two very special guests for this video. First up is my beautiful mama. Oh, hello everybody. <laughs> and my I didn't know what to say. I was gonna say my special sister, and I realized like, what That's does that so mean? mean? And my gorgeous sister Sina is also here. Um, as you can see from the title of this video, today we are gonna be talking about what it's like to be growing up Persian in London, or like just generally like Middle Easterners, because I feel like when we sit with a lot of our Middle Eastern friends, yeah. we, we have so much in common, in, and we can relate to our upbringing so much. And I feel like the best way we can go through it is two different age groups so like the older kid versus the younger kid okay. and youngest youngest daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and the parent um because basically my parents moved here um how many years ago 20 almost 30 years ago 27 28 years ago something like that and um Sina was like a toddler when she moved here um and i was born here so we have been raised in England, but it's if you so differently though, mm. even though we come from the same family and the same parents. Yeah, you know? but we've been raised in England, and specifically we've been raised in London. Me, my whole life, and my parents, my mom and my dad, who's not here right now, um, they really made an effort to make sure we had the most Iranian upbringing yeah, as yes. possible. So before we start this video, just a quick disclaimer that when we discuss everything that we say about Persian families we're not, we're not we're not we understand that we're generalizing but we are speaking about it from our, our family. family as a Persian Middle Eastern exactly. in London and we're not talking on behalf of everyone Anyone else um, some of the things we say might be related to things we hear from our friends but yet we can't be talking on behalf of everyone but we hope that you enjoy anyway and take it as some light-hearted fun so I've made a list of all the things that we are going to be discussing about and we're just gonna go through it with you all of you know just the the key things that come up in our upbringing and if any of you guys out there are um, Middle Eastern or Iranian and can relate please let us know down in the comment section we'd really appreciate it and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to me down below so we're gonna get started first things first that everyone always asks when they sit with us is you know if you're from Iran is Iran the same as Persia yeah, that's so true. <laughs> Everyone always says that. The same as Persia. Um, so <laughs> Persia is the old name of the empire, and Iran is the new name, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Um, so Persia is the old name. And then once you say, yeah, the country is called Iran. So why do you call yourself Persian? So the truth of it is, when I meet people and people ask me where are you from, I say I'm Iranian. But it's really annoying for us because our usernames on like Instagram is like Persian Bunny and Persian Honey. And what people don't know is I don't I don't call myself Persian Bunny because <laughs> I think I'm Persian, not Iranian. So what people don't know is I call myself Persian Bunny because Persian sounds nicer than Iranian bunny, in my opinion. Yeah. Iranian bunny doesn't have like a ring to it. Persian and bunny are both two syllables, so that's why I went with it. But yeah, we're Iranian. And I just call, my, I call myself Persian honey because Seppi initially opened my Instagram account for me and she was like, what do you want to be called? And I was like, what's your name? She was like, Persian bunny. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to be Persian not, bunny. Not true at all. What happened there? No, I, I said, um, I'm Persian bunny. And I was like, don't pick something boring like your name. You should be Persian honey. Oh, yeah. It was something. Yeah. <laughs> but some people, they call them uh, Venus or star. This does not mean they are from uh, sky. <laughs> Venus. <laughs> what? I don't get like some people, they <laughs> Kid's name is Venus. Yeah, but yeah, your Venus. name it doesn't mean they're a star. Or they are not coming. Oh, I got you. <laughs> it's like just because you say you're Persian money, you're Persian money. Oh, yeah, yes. Persian money is just a name. It's the name of the. Yeah, true. Oh, yes. Exactly. So the next big thing that was really like so big in our household of uh, being raised um, Iranian in London is. اصلاً نمیتونی توی خونه به غیر از فارسی هیچ زبان دیگه yeah. صحبت کنی اصلاً نمیشه اصلاً این من الان اینجا نشستم دارم انگلیسی با شما صحبت میکنم <laughs> اینا فقط به خاطر ویدیو راضی هستم <laughs> 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 when we were growing up 
we had to speak Farsi at home all the time which I remember growing up was it was annoying because you know sometimes you want to speak English because you could just put your point across a lot easier because obviously we'd always be speaking English outside but now I'm I'm really grateful that I wasn't allowed to speak English at home yeah because now I can speak Iranian and I love it yeah really, really it's definitely something that I'm going to do with my kids um I want them to be able to speak Full yeah. fluent a lot of people when they came in my house they said if somebody on the street they go to coma and they bring it in your house and after he opened or she opened um, her eyes and uh, she will think she's in Iran she's not in uh, England because <laughs> everything the Croatian yeah we are from quite Iran. Iranian yes. So the next thing that we want to discuss that was really big was, as Sina already mentioned, Iranian school on Saturdays. So some of you guys have commented down below too. because you've seen us there or something. But we <laughs> all went to, well, not my mom. Actually, yeah, my mom yes. was not there. We, I have another sister. We all went to Iranian school on Saturdays. And awesome. that's, one how, to five. Mm -hmm, that's how we have a lot of our friends who are Iranian and how we managed to meet other Iranians, as Sina said said yeah. when she was younger um uh, there were there were yeah. a lot of Iranians but they were kind of dotted around now we kind of have like areas in London specifically that are very very highly densely populated with Iranians so when we were younger um, the best way to meet other Iranians was in Iranian school so yes. we would go to Iranian school every Saturday from 1 to 5 and study Farsi as a, as it was meant to be as a second language but like for us at home when we were yeah. speaking it was our first language to be honest all my friends as well in Iranian school they spoke Farsi really well the only ones that they didn't speak Farsi as good as us were the ones who came from uh, families where yeah they were mixed with the parent the one of the parents yeah one speak. of the parents was uh, for, was not Iranian yeah so, and but even them, them even because... them they still spoke amazing Farsi because their parents really made the effort to put them in Iranian yeah school, and I remember one of my friends uh, we won't say their name but their mum uh, would come to ring school and learn to speak fluent oh, Farsi. Yeah. One of and them spoak Farsi. She speaks amazing. She, Iranian. she speaks amazing Farsi, and she's like completely British, yeah. like no accent. So that was really cool. But yeah, going to ring school was so fun. We managed to make and it was so, so many fun to, like, lifelong friends, and it was so fun to translate Iranian words to English. Yeah, <laughs> like and vice versa. Yeah, like in Iranian, like if someone's cute, you're like, do you get it all? But in English, that means you live her. You know, it doesn't make sense. Like some things don't make sense, but when you're in your little community where you all have like this little thing in common, it was really fun. You know, that's the that icon. Yeah, that's the that icon. It means like thank you so much, but it means I hope your hands don't hurt. Yeah, <laughs> your hand. Yeah, your hand doesn't hurt. So next thing we're going to talk about is traditions. So the biggest tradition that we celebrate every single year, and it's a big deal in every Iranian household, every, all across everywhere. the world all across the world and we're gonna start prepping for it next week is Nowruz. Nowruz. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just say that Nowruz is Iranian New Year and it never falls, it's not like dead on midnight so it could be at uh, three in the morning or four in the morning. It's to do with the start is of the spring time? solstice. Yes. So if you go on like Instagram like or Snapchat, age 45 and 30 seconds. Yeah, like <laughs> if you go on Instagram or Snapchat, you'll see like every all the Iranians that you know at three in the morning or 4:45 a.m. and for Nowruz, you have to be wearing new clothes mm -hmm. and you have to look on point because it means that the whole year that's going to be your year. So mm -hmm. you're going to see. But people. we have 80 yeah. yeah, and you see all your friends. <laughs> They're like on Instagram or Snapchat at four in the morning, like in a suit, dress up, yeah, in a suit or in dresses, like full of makeup, dressed up, like they're going, they're gonna go out clubbing or something. But they're literally just standing there, to, you know, around the table, around the table for Nowruz, and then everyone goes to bed after it. So, what's the first tradition that we have in Nowruz? Eighty. AD. So yes. AD is you, it's cash. Yeah, you give it's cash. Ten pounds, one pound, or fifty pounds, anything. Mm -hmm. You give it to the anyone younger. Another tradition. Another tradition is hand is hand scene. Scene. Okay. That's the, actually, Where it's basically one, yes. you put seven uh, things that start with S with sin on the table. Um, Sabze, Sir, Saina, Saina, <laughs> Saina, <laughs> Saina, <laughs> so, so, yeah, you put seven things that start with S, so have to mean seven and seen means S. 
um, the and start then, with this. And we have yeah. to have like a fish there and goldfish. A goldfish. Goldfish. That the poor thing never survives after two weeks. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's wrong with these poor. Does anyone survive. else's goldfish survive? We feed it, we take yeah, care we of really it. We don't put it in it. sunlight, but these these Nora's goldfish never survive. I don't know why. We had one that survived. Why we three had years. one for two years. Yes. Yeah, that was and a that's back Maddie's shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, his name was Harry, and then my auntie had a matching one called William. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't it George? George. Yeah. Oh, yeah, George, George, that was it. So we had like, we had matching royal family goldfish. And now the tradition is. <laughs> I, I had all of them in my head now. Yeah, the eating uh, the food. No, oh yeah, sabzi, sabzi pola mahi. Yeah, sabzi pola mahi. So, I love sabzi pola mahi. So it's basically Persian fish cooked with um, rice. You know how you have like Christmas lunch? You have basically this. Like the New turkey. Year yeah, lunch. So, but this is the sabzi pola mahi. It's the, the Iranian, Iranian version. version. So it's basically uh, rice that's got um, dill, right? Yes. Yeah, dill and uh, garlic. You must it's have. You, you must you eat want fish. garlic or not? Yes. And then you have it with fish, any type of fish. And you if want. you guys go to any Iranian restaurant, if you're from London or most, you know, major yeah. cities around the world, go to an Iranian restaurant around and Persian New Year in March and ask for sabzi polamahi for sure. Next tradition is, and this is the last one we're going to talk about. I get off <laughs> How can you guys not think of it? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, but no, only Savo, not really such. Ah, Hani, cheesy, we're going to say is, Bakhti mini hone ham diga e didani. So, the last thing that we're going to talk about to do with Noruz, even though there's plenty of traditions that we're just going over first, is she has to, have go to go to, to everyone's house. house. So, normally, the youngest goes to the eldest's house out of respect. Yes, everybody they have. And they, they when you go over there, they give you like uh, Iranian sweets, so Iranian. Like shirini. Yeah, shirini, like pastries and stuff. Which is it so means delicious. at least you have to see your family or and your elders at least once yes. a year. It basically is kind of the tradition is made so people are forced to each see each other at least once a year. Yes. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is growing up as Iranian kids with Iranian parents. You guys got to have like you have to tell us if you can relate to this, and that is you cannot go out after ten o'clock at night. 10 o'clock, I had to be home as soon as school was finished, for one. <laughs> you, Sebi still gets struck. I can, I can school. <laughs> we weren't allowed to, I was never allowed to go out after, like, what was Not it? even after dark, after you school. You had to be home a certain time. Yeah. And then me, when I was like 16, no, when I was oh, 18, I, was, I wasn't allowed to leave the house after 10 o'clock, if that and makes can sense. can I just add another thing? To this day, I'm 31 years old and I'm still not allowed to sleep at my friend's house. Yeah. My friends have to sleep here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm allowed to sleep at my friend's house. I'm allowed to go on holiday with my friends. Everybody there will come, come and stay. Want to stay. Yeah. If, they, if my friends want to come. Or I'm allowed, if I say no, but I really, like not now, but when I was younger, I'm joking about now, but when I was younger, like if I want to stay at my friend's house, no way. They would be like, no, no, no. Yeah. And it's like, no, I don't know why. Cheddar. Um, no, because uh, we think you're not comfortable. <laughs> no, she, my mom's saying this that. This is a culture, you know, and uh, we trust our children, but we don't know out of the world what happened. So what? What about other people? They let their kids come to you. <laughs> exactly. She's I thinking hard about this one. I accept this is not the right mentality. But it's a bit too late. <laughs> what? what, what yes. I, I wish you accepted it when I was growing up. But I was careful. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be honest, I think I would probably be the same. Yeah, yeah. parenting's a tough one. Yeah. As my mom was just saying now, um, what's another thing that all of your daughters weren't allowed to do until they were nineteen? Oh, they wasn't allowed to pluck the eyebrow. Yeah, we weren't allowed to. <laughs> I said you are. Still... I wasn't even allowed to wear makeup. Uh, no makeup. We were, I started wearing makeup when I was sixteen. Yes, uh, but like was sixteen, fun. the end of it. So when I started sick form, um, mm. but we weren't allowed to pluck our eyebrows or oh, a moustache. <laughs> and no, I'm joking. The we hadn't any hair in your face. Yeah, we didn't. We're lucky, lucky we didn't have mono brows, but we Even have cousins did, we and friends who had mono brows. <laughs> and it's kind of a tradition. It's less. Um, like common for people outside of Iran and even in like more even in Iran now yeah. in Iran no, it's less common time, in Iran in a small village um, they wasn't like that yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's just, just these lot. Lot. Just 
But like I know other Iranians who are also strict on it and we weren't allowed to pluck our eyebrows because my dad and my mom believe that when you pluck your eyebrows it takes away like your innocent look like from even if you yeah, wear they makeup look older, for older, older, yeah, it exactly. takes away your innocent mm -hmm. young looks which I agree with it does take away your innocent young long, like, but innocent let young looks look. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah my kids can pluck their eyebrows you know whatever age sorry if we've moved a bit I ran out of memory oh yeah okay so the next thing that is so big growing up Persian is education. So if you guys see any memes about Middle Eastern kids and Iranian kids, the number one thing you'll always see is, are you a doctor, lawyer, or engineer? You know? Yeah, that's so true. These, uh, this lovely lady has, uh, you have one dentist and two future doctors. Um, and no one actually pushed me to want to do medicine, which is very weird. No, like, Sina really wanted me to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah, even though I went into medicine myself. Yeah, and my mum really wanted me to be a dentist. My dad wanted me to do whatever I want, and he, he knew I was passionate about history. So he always wanted me to study history at Oxford, which is a random yeah. one. And I think it's old fashioned now if you want to be a doctor. <laughs> My mum now, but I'm my mum now says that she kind of wish she pushed us into more arts and fun stuff, so that like we're there for more joyous occasions than for like sad, like difficult times of people's, people's lives. Lives. But what we she doesn't understand is that like it actually brings us so much joy to be able to help, help people, people in exactly throughout this and the amount of. Um, prayers and good energy you receive from people when you manage to help them through a difficult situation is incomparable to being there for like, someone's yeah, good times. Yeah, of course you have like sad moments, but... Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just a balance. Most important for me was my daughters be the same level. The same level uh, level of education. Mm. So, like, as in, she doesn't mean like if, all of them doctors. She means that she gave all of them the same opportunity. So, yeah, if exactly. everyone went to university, for example. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what she. If not about. that, probably later on, other ones say, "Oh, I'm an ed educated person." Mm. I think one thing that we take for granted when we make these jokes about Iranian parents or Middle Eastern parents saying we want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or engineer is how much they care for your future. Uh, yeah, and also just that, that how many sacrifices your parents made to get you to where you are today like me personally like I know how hard my parents work and have wor have worked to put me through all of my education and all and of my extracurriculars you speak to your friends yeah, and as well and you just know everyone can relate to each other in that sense yes, I think it's more. easy to I think it's easy to not do anything like for your kids and, and be like oh they'll figure it out along the way it's harder to look out for them without being pushy yeah. so I think that in that sense you guys did a great job oh thank you very much <laughs> One of the things that you guys will probably know about me, because a lot of you have discovered me through my Tehran vlog, is another really important thing about growing up Iranian or Persian is going back home to Iran every single summer. Exactly. And oh thank my you very God. much. I, I love it. it. I yeah. never knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Basically, I think growing up, 99% of my friends, as well as me, our summer was always going not to the France, south of France where you would go to all these places but first you had to go to Iran <laughs> after you've made your Iran trip then you can go anywhere else in the world so literally our childhood would be like when is your Iran air flight? Yeah, <laughs> are you on the t are you on the twenty seventh of July? Are you on the twenty eighth? Nah, twenty seventh. Fully book food. Man, but she does travel so that can I'm not sure. Man, but she does travel so that can I'm join other stand. And then who's your other travel? Everyone, every, all the Iranians have had at, back in the day when there was no online booking. We all I had the same it. travel. I I, no, I can yeah. I can be. Yeah, okay. we all had the same travel agents. So from December, these Iranian mums were on the phone booking those summer literally. flights. And like literally my mum would talk to her cha like my khala and be like, Oh yeah, like man be the girls are showing And the travel agents will tell you as well, very khaharitun in the so funny. But after New Year, everybody they look for booking for some yeah. summer holidays. holidays yeah. yeah. So and a lot of people they say to me thank you very much you show uh, to us uh, Mashhad because we didn't know how beautiful nice places I love Mashhad. in Mashhad so my mum is Mashhadi and my dad is Araki I'm Mashhadi Araki, Araki. Yeah. <laughs> my dad is Araki um, A-R-A-K so it's a city in the north of Iran and um, no, he, uh, Markazi 
Oh, is it? I don't know where it, I don't know where it is on a map. Um, but uh, and then we have a lot of family in Tehran as well. But my mum's original roots are Birjand, um, yes. which is a small city in Iran. So we go to Hello, my family Tehran. in Birjand. <laughs> so we go to Tehran, Mashhad, and Birjand when we visit Iran, and we have the best. We love it ever. Honestly, it's so one of my much favorite fun. holidays every So year. much fun. Shomal we love it. Shomal, Shomal, which is the north, north of Iran, of Iran where everyone goes to the seaside and they have like beach houses or they rent beach houses um, uh, or stay in condominiums and then they can go to the beach with their families. It is so much fun and we love going back. The final topic, which we're going to end this vlog on, is boys. Oh, boys. Okay? Iranian families. <laughs> I swear um, to God, their daughters up, with, with uh, like talking to my boys. dad. I have to say this quickly. My dad has changed so much when it comes to us and when it was Seppi. I remember when I used to walk down the street, I used to look down just to make sure a boy wouldn't look at me <laughs> to say hello because I would have a heart attack because I'd have to explain to my dad how I know this boy. He didn't have nothing, but I would just be so scared. I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, there's that Anthony. Oh my god, let me look away. He's gonna recognize me. He's gonna recognize no, me. So, that, so that's what I'm saying. So, with Sol and Sina. That was young. Yeah. How did she grow up? I mean, with Sol and Sina, I think my dad yeah. was more strict with boys. But with me, um, he's really like cool with all of my guy friends. And I don't have a boyfriend. Even now, as well. About um, us, yes. Yeah, I don't have a boyfriend. But I feel like if I did find someone that I like, um, I would be able to them. say to my dad, Dad, there's of someone course. that I like. And my dad, like in the past, there's, there was someone that I liked. And I told my dad, oh, dad, I like this person. And my dad gave me like a full blown, like he met the person and was like, you know, I like this aspect about him, but this aspect, I don't think you're a match. And I was like, geez, he's right. So in that sense, my dad but has become very forward thinking. But you make your own choice. Yeah. yeah. But you weren't ever like, I can't speak for all of Iranian families when I say this, by the way, in anything that I've spoken yeah. about. We can't speak on behalf of this all Iranian just families. Our family. This is our family growing up Iranian in London. But, um, we would we would never be able to like I know my friends growing up like if they had a boyfriend how oh, boys even, sleep round no, like, no, that is in this no. day because for us time is freezing from thirty five years ago <laughs> <laughs> for my mom and them she's yeah. like a ton time frozen yeah you'd never have boys sleeping round that is like a, a complete no never you or like take a boy up to your bedroom like oh. she's making me laugh just <laughs> the fact that <laughs> imagine that yeah. <laughs> But like a snack for the love. Even if I had like you know set like separate bedrooms or whatever, it's just it would never happen. Never. But I could make a whole video on Iranians and boys if you guys are interested. We'll tell we, could, you. we could give you a part two. But we are gonna end this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to me down below for more family fun. And don't forget to check out my socials. They're always linked in the description, but my Instagram is Persian Bunny and my snap is Seppi Samoy. Sina's Instagram is Persian Honey. Don't forget to check her out. I love you all so, I'm so proud much. of you. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. Bye. And thank you for supporting us. Oh. <laughs>